Can't believe it, but it's time for the OAC Swimming and Diving Championships. It's hard to believe it's already the middle of February, and, and here to preview those Swimming and Diving Championships with us is our head coach of both the men's and women's Swimming and Diving programs, Laura Demeline, who is certainly excited for the weekend. I know yeah. you get to this point in the year, and, and on top of the excitement, you feel a little anxiety. Um, you, there's so much to look forward to, and you know that this is such a fun meet because it's loud and it's entertaining, and uh, you get to swim down at the University of Akron, so there, there's a lot to look forward to. For sure. uh, as you get ready for this weekend, what, what are some of the things you try to do personally to, to make sure that not only you're ready, but that the team's ready to go? So uh, we've spent the past two weeks resting and recovering from their training this season to help them get ready to race this weekend. Uh, as a coach, we try to be positive, uh, remind them about all of the little things that they've done throughout the season to get ready, and then uh, let their hard work speak for itself. I've certainly done that throughout the course of the year. Let's start on the guy's side. One of the more accomplished swimmers in school history, Tyler Thompson, obviously he's gone to the national meet before. Yep. Um, he's got a couple of OAC records, so this is, this is kind of a fun weekend for him to see where he's at. What have you liked about what Tyler's accomplished this year, and, and what do you think we could see from him this weekend? Sure. So for Tyler, we focused a lot this season on the back half of his uh, race in both the 100 and the 200 breaststroke. Um, in the past, the 100 breaststroke has always been his main focus, and we came into the season wanting to uh, put some additional training focus on his 200 as well. Obviously, the goal is to get out and to have swims at NCAAs, and so that has been in the forefront of our mind as we have done his season plan. Um, he has a tremendous men's team around him that has helped him train and you know push him to swim at faster send-offs and hold faster paces than he has in previous years. So we're really excited awesome. about where he is in addition to where the rest of our men are as well. Greg Shaw is now in his second year swimming was a big piece of your freshman class mm -hmm. last year, and, and I know he's been one of your most improved swimmers as the year's kind of gone along. Yeah. What do you like about what Greg's been able to do and, and uh, some of the leadership that he's shown some of the younger guys, hey, you can make a big leap from freshman to sure. sophomore year? Yeah, that's, that's a great point. Um, Greg is uh, somebody who came in this season. Again, we, we talk about goals so much within our program, and so... A lot of his goals that he set this year were training specific goals. He wanted to push himself. Um, he wanted to be able to do some different things and practices that he's not done in previous years. Uh, he made a move from our sprint group into our stroke and middle distance group so that he could start to focus on training for the 200 butterfly. And so what we've seen is that the back half of his 100 fly has improved because of that uh, difference in training. Um, his leadership within the team, he's, he's an um, incredibly positive individual, and so uh, I think that he brings a love of the sport and a love of the water to practice with him every day, and I think that it allows the rest of the swimmers around him to sort of feed off of his enjoyment. Pretty cool to watch, uh, especially those two compete, but the Yellow Jackets uh, in general. Yeah. On the ladies' side, there's a lot of names you're going to see throughout the course of the weekend because it seems like everybody's involved in, uh, in a couple of different events, yeah. uh, and you don't really necessarily have one runaway standout swimmer, but a lot of young ladies that are back from you know last year sure. when you guys made a nice little run. So what are you hoping that as a group on, on the ladies' side, last year's experience can help you, you know, with this year's, uh, this year's tournament? Yeah, so I think last year at uh, our OAC meet, especially in the 800 free relay, our medley relays, the girls got a taste of what their potential was, what they could do. And so they came into this season with some very specific goals on paper about what they wanted to do with our relays, what they wanted to do with the record board. Um, and with the addition of just a couple of freshmen, with not graduating any seniors last year, it's really allowed us to fill the few holes that there were on the roster. And so we're going into this meet with an incredibly strong roster. When you look at the psych sheet, you're seeing, you know, two, three girls from BW in the top eight in each event. Our relays are seated in the top three in each event. And so it's... Um, it's very exciting. <laughs> they, they've they put the work in, they've sort of kept their heads down, stayed focused. We have tremendous leadership from a couple of our seniors, uh, sort of showing the younger swimmers the way. And 
the ones that got touched out this year don't want to get touched out again. The ones that were in that 800 free relay want to reset their school record. So it's it's pretty exciting as a coach to get to go along for the ride. Yeah, I can imagine. It's uh, it, it was it's kind of a fun year. You really follow the swimming schedule throughout the course of the season, and you swim some conference meets, you swim some non-conference meets. You also had a trip down uh, to Florida. It was right after the New Year, if I'm not mistaken, right. early January. Uh, and you swim against four different teams, or I should say three different teams, none of whom were in the OAC, and, right. and they were really from all over the place. So uh, what does a trip like that do in the middle of the season to maybe, I don't know, break up the monotony of yeah. constantly, you go to class, you're in school, you, you do your homework, then you go swim in one of the familiar gymnasiums? Mm -hmm. So there's a very few times in the year where our swimmers and divers can actually just focus on their sport. Um, the majority of our swimmers and divers have jobs, they have a full class schedule. Uh, a lot of them are very involved with their families and with different campus organizations. And so what we love about that week in Florida is it's a chance for them to reset, refocus, and to get to just be swimmers and divers for a week uh, where it, you know, we're able to get such incredible training in. The relay meet that we swam with Kenyon, Washington, St. Louis, and Indiana Wesleyan just showed us some levels of competition that we don't see during the year. So it's really fun to get up and race against those schools. Um, and it just is, you know, it's, yeah, it's Florida. So it's Florida in <laughs> January, you can't complain about that. Uh, but it is such a tremendous opportunity for our team to train and sort of make that final push towards this week. Um, I tell the swimmers it is, it's the, the start of that that final swing into OACs where they are getting their their last bit of just incredible training in and where we do dry land on the beach every day they do uh, long runs we're getting double sessions in the pool our divers were able to do double sessions each day on both one and three meter which they don't have the opportunity to do back home um, and so you see them come back a different team and it, it's really neat pretty awesome can't wait to see the Yellow Jackets compete this weekend. If you haven't been down to the OAC Swim Meet, highly encourage that you go. They have different sessions on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. It has to be the most fun environment uh, in OAC swimming all year long. So if you can get there, the Jackets would really love your support. But if not, we'll have you covered right here on BWYellowJackets.com. Thanks, Brendan.